It's another great day with Brian and Tracy. And Nate Smith with Bulletproof on 101.7 KSAM. Okay, who touched the thermostat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fights are going to get more and more interesting if this trend actually makes its way to Texas. But uh, over in Oregon, their biggest power company is now rolling out the new smart thermostat program where they get to change the temperature in your home. Uh, <laughs> other cities have been adding similar programs over the last few years. Basically, you install the smart thermostat and you pay a little less each month in exchange for letting them control your thermostat remotely. Yeah, that would not work for me at all. My, me neither. Uh, no. During peak hours, they, they would up the temperature by just a few degrees to reduce the strain on the grid. And uh, that usually is between 3 and 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, the new Oregon uh, version limits it to only 3 degrees. So if you set your thermostat to 71, they might up it to 74 mm-hmm. or something like that. Uh, anyways, what do you, do you think you would go for that? You want someone controlling your thermostat? No. No. No, because here's the thing. And I, I am responsible enough of an, as an adult to where I can control my, like, bring out yeah. my temperature 1 or 2 degrees. But when you have multiple sclerosis... They don't know what I go through. So what if they decide, okay, we're going to check it up five degrees, six degrees, and so forth to save money for our grid, not for me. It's for them and their grid. So then all of a sudden, I'm heat having no... No, 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 no. Yeah. No. Yep. Different people got to have different uh, temperatures. Exactly. Some Some can handle it a little warmer and... Others need to have it much cooler. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be very comfortable with that either. It, it would That's, it would start an argument. Like, Who I, touched my thermostat? Yeah, exactly. It's like, get out of my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> get out of my fridge. Yeah, next thing, you, you're changing the thermostat. Next Don't, thing you know. You're change the channel on the TV. Someone's been taking the root beer. I mean, come on. <laughs> Chase Matthew on 101.7 KSAM playing today's best country and all of your favorites. So in this new age of social media hacks, tricks, trends, whatever we're going to call it, it's easier than ever to learn that you've been doing something wrong. Great. (laughs) That's exactly what I want to hear. In a new poll that was done, apparently 40% of Americans, mainly adults specifically, say that they've witnessed their own parents making mistakes while cleaning and doing other chores around the house and about half have tried to correct them. Overall, they've asked people what cleaning tasks that they've been told they, they're they doing wrong, and the number one was folding laundry, which makes sense since everyone seems to have their own spin on the right way to do it. I was a, I was the oldest, or I am the oldest in my family, so I was the laundry kid. That was it, you know, folding clothes, separating them, dishing them out, everything. But here's a top 10 list of what People have been told that they're doing incorrectly. We'll start at number 10. Dusting at 16%. Number 9, also at 16%, cleaning furniture. Number 8, cleaning the toilet, 17%. Number 7, the one that perplexes me on all this, at 18%, mowing the lawn. I don't get how you mess up mowing the yard, but either way. Number six, gardening or yard work at 21%. Number five, doing dishes by hand, 23%. Number four, loading the dishwasher at 25%. Number three, doing laundry at 26%. Number two, mopping slash sweeping at 28%. And folding laundry, 33% of people say they've been told they're doing it wrong. I feel like I need to go back to the, the, the mowing the yard thing. How do you mess up mowing the yard? It's pretty simple. You stay in your yard, you go up and down in lines, and then you edge afterwards, and you're good to go. I don't get, I don't get what the difficult part of it is. Kevin Sharp on one hundred one point seven K Sam playing today's best country and all of your favorites. So, apparently today is a national holiday. It's National State Fair Food Day. Apparently this holiday is only a couple of years old, but while it's that, apparently state fair, well, I say apparently, state fairs are definitely not only a couple years old. The first one was held in Syracuse, New York in 1841. That's 183 years ago. 
According to a recent poll, the number one reason Americans go to state fairs is for the food. Agreed. 81% of people say that's a draw more than spending time with family and friends, entertainment, music, rides, animals, so on and so forth. But some states are crazier about the food at the fairs than others. A survey found that the state of Vermont actually loves their state food, state fair food the most. The others, Ohio in second, followed by South Dakota, West Virginia, Washington, Arkansas, North Dakota, Tennessee, Florida, and Iowa. Utah is the state that is the least interested in fair food. It's unclear if that means their tastes are higher or lower than standard fair food, fair fair, but either way, whatever. <laughs> Point is. Hawaii is also down on the list, and the other states that are okay passing on fair food are Montana, Rhode Island, Maine, Delaware, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Oregon, and Michigan. With all that said, I just have one question. Where in the world is Texas on this list? Parmalee, going to love you on your hometown radio station, 101.7 KSAM. Hey, good afternoon. I am Big Glenn Edwards. Thanks for being with us. Your forecast is coming right up. So are you ever trying to spend less? Well, someone asked people in a Reddit group called Frugal for ideas, and here are some money-saving hacks from cheap people. <laughs> okay, uh, Let's see here. Going to start uh, with number six. Pack a lunch. Of course, not a new idea. But someone did the math and found that it saved them $35,000 in 12 years. Think about that. That's like three grand a year. Uh, number four, plan your meals when you shop. Uh, so if you're going to do pork chops and they're on sale, get them instead of doing that chicken. Number four, pay with cash when you're out with friends. Take a set amount with you. That'll keep you from overspending. Uh, number three, use a library. Uh, most people don't even do that anymore. It's free. Yeah. How about this? Uh, number two, use a budgeting app to track your impulse purchases. And number one, you can't buy something unless you get rid of something else. Makes sense to me. What do you think? Number five on the top 10 countdown, Brian Martin, we ride here on 101.7 KSAM, playing today's best country and all of your favorites. So like I mentioned, there's a, a list of four different events or you know areas, whatever, that are the typical summer outing things to do during these three months of insanely hot weather and a lot of sunscreen buying <laughs> and lathering, whatever. But with those comes food, because obviously you're going to have to eat at some point. Apparently there was a list that was put together that displays what the best foods to bring to every type of these outings are during the summer. So here's the list, starting at number four. A picnic. Everybody thinks to pack their own basket, but takeout food like sandwiches or a bucket of fried chicken is really underrated for a summer picnic, apparently. Sure. Whatever. It's food outside on a on a you know a blanket. Move a park probably somewhere. Who cares? It's food. Just enjoy it. <laughs> Number three, an outdoor concert. Go for low maintenance foods like a hoagie or a wrap and check for restrictions on booze, but opt for canned wine instead of big glass bottles. I can't remember the last time I went to a concert, but it was nothing like this. I think actually the last one I went to was a Jason Derulo concert uh, pre-pandemic at Minute Maid Park after an Astros game one night. Yeah, not really a concert per se. <laughs> Either way, it was still fun. Speaking of the Astros, number two on the list in MOB Ballpark. A lot of people actually don't know this, but you can bring food into several MLB stadiums. I know Mini Maid Park you used to. I don't know if you can anymore though. Salty snacks like nuts or Chex Mix or small pre-made sandwiches are the way to go for this. So you're not spending your entire life savings on concession food because they're all $25 per one plate. And number one on this list for the best foods to bring to every summer outing, the pool or the beach. Fresh cut fruit is perfect for pool or beach days because it tastes nice and cold and helps replenish lost sugars and hydration as well. So if you're thinking about taking a trip to Galveston, probably go ahead and get yourself some fruit. That, that evidently is the best way to go.